everyone. My name is Rachel and I am your welcome host today. Thank you for making an effort to join us, whether you are in-house or online. We appreciate you taking the time and we would love the chance to connect with you. If you are new or haven't reached out before, you can fill out the connect card located under the seat in front of you. You can drop us a note by heading to our website, mountainview.church and clicking connect, or you can text the word connect to the number on your screen. We would love to welcome you to check out our website, mountainview.church. We feel it really captures our mission and vision, which is to be an authentic, vibrant church serving and reaching our city. We have so many exciting things happening right now, so I would encourage you to check it all out. We are also incredibly thankful for your financial support. To partner with us financially, you can text the word GIVE to the number on your screen or head over to our website. Again, it's mountainview.church and click GIVE to see our online giving options. And of course, if you're in-house, you will find an envelope under the seat in front of you. Make sure to put your name and address if you're new so that we can send you a donation receipt. Thank you once again for your support, whether financially, volunteering, or through prayer. Hi everyone, I hope you had a good week. Downstairs, our base camp program is available during our Sunday's gathering at 9.30 and 11 a.m. And if your kids cannot join us in-house, please visit our website at mountainview.church slash basecamp to access our Basecamp online and download the lessons and activities for this week. Scramblers, today we are learning that we can help others even when times are hard. In the Bible, we find a story about a time when Jesus' friends were told that some women in God's family did not have enough food to eat. So they chose seven leaders to make sure that God's family was okay and had food to eat. Scramblers, what would you do if a friend needed your help? Did you say help them? Yes, as Christians, we are called by God to help others. So, if you want to learn how we can help others, join us this Sunday at Base Camp. Thanks for listening, and I hope you have a great week. Hey, Junior Youth. My name's Ruben, and I help Elijah out with our youth program. But I work with the senior youth, so some of you haven't met me yet. This weekend, when you guys get together, you'll be playing some dodgeball. Regular dodgeball, doctor dodgeball, free-for-all dodgeball. All the dodgeballs. And when you sit down for a snack, we'll talk where exactly we have to go looking to find God. I'll let you in on a little secret. You'll find him everywhere, because no matter where you look, you're looking at a world that he made. Since that's true, I'll ask you a question. Do you see God when you look at the things that he created? Think about that a little bit this week, and we'll talk about it on Saturday. Thanks, guys. song we could ever sing Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring Worthy of every breath we could ever bring We live for you Jesus, the name above every other name Jesus, the only one who could ever say, Worthy of every breath we could ever bring, we live for you, we live for you. We could
could ever say. Worthy of all praise we could ever bring. Worthy of every breath we could ever bring. We live for you. We live for you. Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever say. Worthy of every breath we could ever be. We live for you. Oh, we live for you. Holy, there is no one like you. There is none beside you. Open up my eyes in wonder. Show me who you are and tell me with your heart and Believe it or not, we're already halfway through the month of January. How are those New Year's resolutions going? Are you still holding strong or have you already given up? Well, if you've already quit your resolution, you're not alone. Research shows that 23% of people who make resolutions quit them in the first week and only 36% make it past the first month. For some, it's almost purposeful as 43% expect to give up on their goals by February. There's only 9% of the population that successfully keep their New Year's resolutions throughout the year. Now, why is that? Why is the resolution success rate so low? Why are people so prone to quit? Perhaps it's because almost every resolution is based on improving ourselves. My New Year's resolutions are centered around me, and your resolutions have you at the center of them. They're all about us, focused on us, and that might be part of the problem. That might be why so many of them end in failure, because our resolutions are self-focused. Thankfully, January is not over. We could decide to make a shift in our resolutions. We could change who is at the center of them then change our focus. We could change who receives the benefits. What if we set a resolution where Jesus was at the center and the focus was on improving our world instead of improving ourselves? What if I prioritized improving my world over improving myself? This shift might change what success looks like, but those changes will have a far greater impact. Over time, the evidence might bring me to the conclusion that improving my world is a better resolution than improving myself. Improving my world is a better resolution than improving myself. This new strategy on resolutions is connected to our goal to make this year a selfless year. Instead of following the cultural message of a new year, a new you, 
we're choosing to say, for this new year, I'm going to pursue less me. The obvious next question is, how do we improve our world? We're going to dive into some teachings of Jesus to find out. If you don't have a Bible, don't worry. You can visit Bible.com or download a Bible app to your mobile device. If you'd like a physical Bible, you can text Bible to the number on your screen right now, and we can mail you one. And if you're in-house, you can find a Bible under the seats in front of you. I'm reading from Matthew chapter 5, verses 13 to 18. You are the salt of the earth, but if salt has lost its taste, how shall its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled under people's feet. You are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a stand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. For truly I say to you, until heaven and earth pass away, not an iota, not a dot, will pass from the law until all is accomplished. Through this teaching, Jesus is preparing his disciples for a future time, when he will no longer be with them. Jesus knew that one day he would be arrested, tortured, executed on a cross, and buried in a tomb. It would be a heartbreaking moment for his disciples, but it would be God's plan to bring forgiveness, redemption, and eternal salvation to the world. Jesus was the Son of God and the perfect sacrifice to pay for humanity's sin. Three days after burial, he would rise again, conquering death and sin, and appear to over 500 witnesses in living bodily form before ascending to heaven. Jesus' disciples were called to carry his message and mission into the world. Let's read Matthew 5, 14. You are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden. The disciples of Jesus would be the light of the world and a city set on a hill that couldn't be hidden. Christians, or Christ followers, both then and now are called to carry the message and mission of Jesus and continue being his light for the world. Let's continue this thought by looking at verse 15. Nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a stand, and it gives light to all in the house. When someone receives Jesus, they're ignited with a new life and purpose. In a spiritual sense, they're like a lamp filled with the oil of God's Holy Spirit, called to shine brightly for others to see and never to be hidden. As I was reflecting on this verse, it reminded me of a story that my dad told about his childhood. He grew up in northern England and remembered watching the lamp lighters from the front window of his house. Every evening, each street lamp needed to be manually sparked, and each morning, the flame needed to be manually quenched. Teams of lamplighters would meander throughout the city, using long poles to spark the natural gas and light up the streets. Without the lamplighters, the streets of the city would be cloaked in darkness. These days, our street lights are connected to the power grid. But I feel like this old time lamplighters example is good for us to consider. We're called to be lamplighters for Jesus in our city. We're called to bring his light into our streets. But perhaps you're wondering, what does sharing the light of Jesus have to do with improving our world? What about that, Jeremy? Well, let's keep reading verse 16. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. Jesus said, let your light shine. We let the light of Jesus shine through the intentional good works that we do for others. Our good work is a starting point for a spiritual process that is ignited by the Holy Spirit. 
Our good works can lead people to big questions about God and eternity. Our good works can start them on a faith journey toward the source of our light, which is Jesus Christ. Then, hopefully one day, they will become a Christ follower and give glory to our Father who is in heaven. Every good work to improve our world can be transformed into a light that will shine for Jesus. A good work to improve our world is a light that will shine for Jesus. Now, let's come back to the beginning. If you've been convinced that improving your world is a better resolution than improving yourself, you might be wondering, how do I get started? What are my options, Jeremy? Well, as I announced last Sunday, a team from Village Church will be joining us for Share the Light Week. Fitting, isn't it? The Yukon is a place where people in nature seem to have really found a way to coexist. It's vast, it's, it's wilderness, and yet people have found a way to carve out a life here, but without destroying what's been here long before us. It's the kind of place where if you've never been here and you come here, there's a really good chance you'll fall in love with it and never want to leave. But at the same time, if you've grown up here, there's this attachment to nature and to uh, just being so far from everything else that just, it just makes it special. Whitehorse is the capital city of the Yukon. Compared to Vancouver or the bigger cities, it's, it's a small town probably. But it is what it is. It's, it's our hub up here. It's the hub of the north. And kind of everything flows through Whitehorse and then spreads out to the various communities. But it's certainly not any more important than any one of the communities in the Yukon. January and February in the Yukon is tough. It's, it's darker than most places because of, of our latitude. We're really far north. The cold is ever present and if you're not ready for it, it's gonna hit you hard. So Boxes of Light was kind of a, an idea that, that came up between uh, Pastor Jeremy and Norton of Mountain View Church and Village Church. And it's an outreach project that is kind of specific to the needs of the North at this time of year, when it's dark, when it's cold, and post-Christmas anxiety is, is full force. Uh, the joy of Christmas and the, the kind of nostalgia has worn off. Credit card bills and, and debt are hitting you hard. And honestly, there's a lot of compassion fatigue. So a lot of the, the services that pop up at Christmas to help those that, that might be suffering, frankly, just aren't there this time of year. So Boxes of Light was kind of initiated to address those needs a little bit. Village Church and Mountain View have done Boxes of Light for two years now. It started last year in 2021, and then 2022 we've been able to launch our second one, and it's been great because we were able to send a small team here, restrictions opened up a little bit, and allowing us to come partner with the Mountain View team, and it's just a gift to be able to do it together. Today was super fun. Today was a crew from Mountain View Church and a crew from Village Church teaming up to take a bunch of individual items, put them together in this box and create something really special that, that we can pass on to our community and their surrounding communities. Today it was really exciting. Our team put together 250 boxes. Last year there was 200 and we were able to up it to 250. So we're so excited to reach more people this year to bring light to people in a dark time and to fill their lives with joy. So after we packed the boxes, uh, that's only half, half the job. So now it's distribution. 
We have various agencies throughout Whitehorse and throughout the Yukon, various communities that we've been in contact with or have relationships with that are eager to receive these boxes. So now it's just a matter of getting them into the hands of people who can really benefit from them. The Boxes of Light is just a box, but the amount of thought, love, and care that go into this is palpable. And I think when one receives this box, they know that someone put time, effort, and thought into them. And someone took the time to, to reach beyond themselves and present love. Yesterday, dozens of people spent hours packing 250 boxes of light for individuals who are struggling with depression, addiction, and other mental health related issues. This week, these boxes will be delivered to local agencies who will then privately distribute them to their clients. If you'd like to help with delivery, please drop us a message below. Tonight, we're hosting a knitting and mental health night to teach, discuss, support, and build relationships while learning to knit. Please note that you don't have to knit or even have a desire to learn to attend the session. The main goal is to support those who are struggling. Consider attending and invite a friend. On Tuesday night, we'll be facilitating an instructional session providing tips for navigating depression during the dark days of winter. This session isn't just for those who are struggling. It's also for friends and family members who want to know how to support their loved ones who are struggling. Who could you invite to this session? Who do you know that is battling the darkness of depression? One small invitation is a good work that God's Spirit could ignite into healing and potentially a new life and purpose in Jesus. Obviously, there are dozens of other good works that God might be placing on your heart right now or this week. Each of us needs to ask ourselves, how am I sharing the light of Jesus in my city? Will this year's resolutions be focused on improving myself or improving my world? Let's pray. Dear Father, I thank you so much for this message of your son, Jesus. I thank you for his call for us as his followers to be a light to the world, that we need to be that city on a hill that can't be hidden. May we never be shy or embarrassed or ashamed or lazy in letting our light shine. Help us point people to your son, Father, if there's someone listening that doesn't know you, that's never heard the message of Jesus until now, Father, may your Holy Spirit draw them to you. May they give their life to you. May they submit themselves to your call that they may understand that they're sinful, that they do wrong, but that they can be forgiven through the power of Jesus. Father, help us as we start this initiative and move forward in reaching people in our city, trying to do good works, but not just to do good works, but to show your light, to improve our world. No matter who's listening, Father, give them ideas. May your spirit move in them, convict them, show them in their workplace, in their neighborhoods, in the places and people that they know and they interact with, Give them ideas on how they can do good work, all for your glory. We ask this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Last thing on the agenda today is our prayer and discussion groups. So gather around if you're with some people, or you can plan on putting some comments down below in the feed. But we have three little assignments, different than last week, but still a good thing for us to do. 
At Mountain View, we don't just want it to be about you listening or watching content. We want to build connection and community, and we want you to interact with the people in your household, in your friend uh, or family set. So maybe get together with some friends and family and ask this question, how many hours per week do I spend improving myself? Your household, what do you do? Is, or maybe you as an individual, are you focused on you too much maybe? Are your resolutions all focused on you? And how much, how much time do you spend? How many hours are self-focused? Then, once you've got that, move on to the second question. How many hours per week do I spend, or does your household spend, improving my world? Take some stock in the timeline of your week. You, your family, your household, roommates, whatever, how much time do you spend improving your world? Or is it still all spent on you? It might be convicting, but maybe for you, the, the scales are tipped in the right direction. I don't know. You need to look at your own life and figure it out in your schedule. All right, last one is to pray and ask God for conviction, for him to move, for him to give you ideas. How will I share his light this week? How will my friends, my family, how will my household roommates share his light this week? What kind of good works am I going to do this week? All right. Thank you so much for being here with us at Mountain View Church. Uh, next week, we're going to continue this selfless series, and there's going to be more challenges, more insight. And so we hope you join us. Again, if you want to get involved in our Share the Light week, go to mountainview.church slash share the light. That's mountainview.church slash share the light. And if you want to financially support what we're doing here at Mountain View, go to mountainview.church slash give, mountainview.church slash give. And last but not least, if you want to connect with us at Mountain View Church, be a part of our church family, go to mountainview.church and click connect. mountainview.church slash connect. We'll see you next week.